Have you ever wanted to send a newsletter or receive a client event registration under a different email address? Um, but you wish that you can manage all your messages from one primary account and you don't want to buy another mailbox. Yes, you can with the Microsoft alias emails. Hi, I'm Teresa at Track Creation for e where we explore, experiment, and execute effectively. Today, I want to cover what is an alias email account, discuss the reasons and when to use an alias email account, and I will share some key factors and some limitations on when you create one. So what is an alias email account? It allows a user to have more than one email address associated with Outlook and all your messages shares the same inbox, contact list, and calendar. So there's no more switching between mailboxes when you're managing your emails and it's free. You don't have to worry about purchasing another Microsoft 365 license. There are four reasons that you may need to create additional email accounts. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot more that you could come up with. If so, add them in the comments below, but let me share the four that I wanted with you today. The alias email feature has been around since 2013. Microsoft initially designed this feature for business owners or email or employees responsible for multiple positions within a small or a medium sized company. So for an example, a business owner may want to send a separate email, a, um, email address for personal business or marketing related messages. Once again, all from one mailbox. Another reason for an alias email account is privacy and security. You have the flexibility to display a full name email address globally on the internet, which is more personable, but you are targeted to receive a lot of spam. So consider creating an alternative email instead and designate it for business functions or generic email addresses like sales at or info at. Just know if you send any messages using this type of email address, it may get blocked in the recipient spam. So there are you know, both pros and cons when you decide you wanna use a personal or generic type of email alias. You must choose what's best for you or aligned um, with your company's governance. So here are some examples of a personal email aliases. You may wanna have um, one with your nickname that is designated for your family or friends. You could create um, an email address and um, reserved for your school, um, just a few examples. From the business side, you may decide you want to stay anonymous and for privacy reasons, you may want to use sales or registration or contact us or career. Another reason for an alias email account is branding. Most companies of any size are engaged in internet branding and marketing campaigns. So here's an opportunity for you to create seasonal or project related emails like spring offers at, which is for external purposes, or you can have employee discounts, which can be used for internal. The nice thing about it all is that during the off season, you can deactivate um, those email addresses. And here are some examples of, you know, some seasonal um, um, emails. Okay. So the um, a last reason that I want to talk about is just better organization. I now I have the ability to create Outlook rules and to move my messages directly to a folder quickly, um, just based on the the name of the email address. It's pretty simple. Let's recap alias email reasons to have multiple email addresses. One, if you have multiple roles and you want um, an email address designated for each business group. Privacy and security, 
internet branding and marketing, which is seasonal, you can have um, email addresses that's dedicated to Black Friday sales. And the last one is organization. Once again, you can create rules to move um, email addresses to designated folders. So how many alias emails can one person have? And the answer is 400, but use them wisely. You can also reassign a default alias as the primary send email address, or you can actually, all other aliases are available in the drop-down menu in the from line, and you can select which email address you want to use. So now let's talk about what you need to know when creating a free alias email account. Feature availability. So you have to have Outlook.com or Microsoft 365 business or inter in enterprise plans package. Um, it's not available for the family and personal plans or Hotmail, Live, or MSN um, accounts. Permissions. So for Microsoft 365 business subscriptions, administrator role manages the primary and all alias accounts. If you are a small or mid-sized business owner, you may have administrator rights to manage email accounts. If not, work with your IT department. Nevertheless, um, you can log into your Microsoft 365 admin center to create and manage your um, email aliases. Process completion duration. Um, a new alias account, it takes approximately 24 hours to sync with all Microsoft subscriptions applications. So make sure you plan accordingly. Your alias email is assigned to you and your mailbox only. So do not create an e alias email account if you want to share your inbox messages with others. So you have to create a shared mailbox instead. And this is another topic for another day. All right, big caution, red alert. Um, when you delete an alias account, um, it is immediate. It is permanent, it is not recoverable, and it's gone forever. So here is a good reason why you should develop governance and guidelines for alias emails when you create and delete. Which brings me into the next segment. So for small and mid-sized companies, I strongly encourage you to create processes and best practice to ensure that creating and deleting alias emails do not get out of control. So um, how many, um, you have 400 free aliases, you know, doesn't mean that you need to use all of them. You can consider assigning each person or business function up to about three alias um, per person. Um, this, and, and they should have a legitimate business reason to have a alias account. Um, all requests must be reviewed and approved by a manager or director or supervisor. Um, once again, this is just really getting things in control. You don't want to give an alias email account to an intern or part-time employee. Just keep in mind, should the employee leave the company, you may end up with a lot of unused alias um, emails. So alias um, attributes, you should consider having four to 32 characters should include, you know, letters, numbers, and underscores and dashes, but don't have something that is only two characters um, for as an email address. And here's a little bonus tip. So um, don't use the underscore in your email address. Um, it is hidden, as you can see on the slide, actually um, have it highlighted. You don't know if it's just a regular underline or if it's a blank space in between. So um, it's just a little tip that I normally do not like using an underscore. I'll use a dash instead. 
Okay, another one. Do not impersonate another person or business function that you are not part of. So I think that's a little self-explanatory. You know, don't say that, you know, you are the CEO and, and, you're, and you are not. <clears throat> Do not use fictitious alias email addresses on the Internet or when you send out an email. So think about emails that you might have created when you were a teenager and may not be appropriate in the professional environment. You know, watch out for email addresses like Charles Hill. He wanted to use his first initial and last name, but it became Chill at domain names. So just watch out on what type of names that you use. You may not want to use Dog Lover 25 um, for personal for professional purposes. Never, ever, ever, you know, use terms or phrases in your emails that may um, impact your company in a negative way. So stay away from political, re, um, religion, race and gender bias email addresses unless it's truly represent your company. Won't get in trouble that way. The last thing that I want to make sure I cover with you is track all alias emails that you create. So if you create them and you end up deleting them, you need to keep track. Right now, Microsoft 365 Admin Center do not have one report with all the alias that ever been created and deleted. You actually had to click on each active user to actually see what alias is assigned to that count. So do you have something, a manual process on keeping track that what has been used and deleted? Okay, so let's do a recap. This is what I've covered today. We talked about what is an um, alias email account, so you now know what it is. We talked about the four reasons why a person would want a separate email address. I know there's much more um, out there. Please add them in the comments in um, um, below. Um, I also talked about the key factors and considerations when creating um, an email. And then last, I am real big on developing processes and controls. So I provided some suggested guidelines and best practices for creating an alias email account. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Also visit Track Creation 4E website for more information about this topic and other Microsoft applications.